Hello guys, these were some questions that I had when FromSoft announced the expansion to Elden Ring. So I wanted to share them and discuss them with you guys and to see what I thought about them right now. When is it coming out? Well, I don't know. But if I had to guess, I would say February. Because the game came out in February, the DLC announcement came out in February, it seems logical to assume that the DLC will also came out in February. But this is just a guess guys, don't take my word for it. But I do hope that From Software take their sweet as time to release the DLC that they are satisfied with. I don't want them to rush things, but I kinda want them to hurry up. Okay, next question. How big is it going to be? It's not about the size, it's about the content. And if we look at From Software previous titles, because that's the only data we have right now, we should look at the previous DLC that FromSoft has released. We can look at the town of Oompa Loompas from Dark Souls 1. We can look at Shrine of Amana and Frigid Outskirts from Dark Souls 2. And we can look at Dark Souls 3. The Ring City and Ashes of Ariandale. So looking at these DLCs, From Software DLC is normally around 20 to 40 percent of the base game. And looking at the scope of Elden Ring, and they are calling this DLC an expansion. And I don't think they will release another after this. Keeping that in mind, we can safely assume that DLC would definitely have 10 to 30 hours worth of content. It is unreasonable to expect another Elden Ring as an expansion, however, it should be easily bigger than the both DLC of Dark Souls 3 combined. About the content, I think the DLC would have 5 or more than 5 main bosses and some mini bosses spread throughout the area. Okay, next question, how are we going to enter the DLC? Well first my boy, you have to buy it. And second, I can think of 3 ways to enter the DLC. The first one and the most disappointing one would be you enter a coffin and you wake up in the DLC. They can keep that as an option but I hope they don't do that. The second entry point in the DLC seems to me like the Mogwin Palace. In the area where we cancelled Mogwin, there is this fucking egg in which Mikela is slumbering. In my mind, I can imagine a cutscene where you reach your hand out to touch Mikela the big man grabs you and pulls you inside the fucking egg and you wake up in the DLC. That would be cool. And the third entry point of the DLC should be at Helic Tree. In the area we fought Melania, if you pay attention, the shape of this tree in this area looks like a human and there is a hole underneath it. If you zoom in just right, you can see me and I will take you into the DLC. But jokes aside, I think this could also be an entry point because we know Mikela used his blood to feed the Helictree. So there is definitely a connection between Helictree and Mikela and I think we can use it to enter the uh, Shadows of the Earth Tree expansion. Okay, next question. I think this is the most interesting question. Is Mikela going to be a friendly NPC or a boss fight? I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think he will be happy to see us. We have killed his entire bloodline and he is the only person alive from the intro cinematic of the Elden Ring. Everyone is dead except Mikela. But people think there is no way to predict this. But I disagree. I put all of my four brain cells to use and I've uncovered some information that leads me to believe that gives me few reasons that Mikela is going to be a boss fight. He is not going to be a final boss but I definitely think he is going to be a boss fight. The first reason being, like I said, he is the only person left with life subscription from the intro cinematic of the base game. Second goes into a little bit of lore. So we know that Mogwin kidnapped the big man Mikela and right now he is slumbering inside this fucking egg. And I believe that outer god, formless mother and Mikela are struggling for control over the real body in the real world. So I think the final boss of this DLC would be an emissary of formless mother and after that we are going to fight Mikela. Next question, will they add anything new to the current map? Well they better do and I think they will because it would be a waste to not use such a large world but I definitely think they would add some lower elements in the real world and since the DLC wouldn't be connected to the lens between, I think placing quest items in the real world which we can use to help Mikela against Formless Mother would be a good addition. Okay that's it guys, these were the topics that I wanted to discuss about the deals. Now it's time for my question. How come more people have achieved 
Age of Stars, the Rani ending, more than the normal ending. What's going on there? Okay, bye, bye, see ya.